Hello everybody, John Fogart here, and we are here to talk about the cognitive development theorist, William Perry. And as I mentioned the word cognitive, it's important to understand that Perry uh, wrote a theory about one's cognitive development. So it's different from psychosocial and other, other theories there, focusing solely on how do people make sense of the world? How do they filter the information that comes into them uh, as they learn? The one thing um, to start with to realize is that cognitive development and intelligence are independent concepts. So someone could have a very high level of intelligence, um, but a lower level of cognitive development and vice versa. So be careful not to confuse those two terms. Now, Perry was a professor, um, and like many in, uh, student development theorists in the very beginning, he was at Harvard, and he studied and or he worked there uh, to refine his theory. Now, there are several different terms that are important to understand when you try to get your mind around Perry's theory. And I'll be honest, when I first learned about Perry's theory, it took me a long time to really not only read and understand, but kind of wrap my head around. So if at first you're having some difficulty wrapping your head around Perry, you're not alone. Now, there are two different terms um, to think about with Perry and how his theory itself is organized. There's levels and then there are positions. Uh, Perry's theory has four levels, nine positions. And so level one would be the most basic level of cognitive development, and it has positions one and two. Level two is the next most complex uh, area of cognitive development. That has positions three and four, and it goes on from there. So um, the basic uh, thought that Perry was trying to get across is that a level one um, cognitive developmental level, try not to use the word level twice, um, a, a level one cognitive development he, re, he labeled as dualism. So people who are in dualism see things as like an either or right, wrong, this way, that way, and they tend to see things as one way or the other. Level two is labeled multiplicity, and in that case, they tend to see multiple alternatives and multiple ways of thinking, doing, believing, um, however, they don't necessarily have the tools to evaluate how do you determine which idea is better. Um, they may think that all ideas have the same merit um, and that sort of thing. Relativism gets a little bit deeper um, and it is the belief that knowledge is contextual um, and, and relative. So um, seeing how multiple perspectives fit into a larger whole, um, that sort of thing. And then finally, his fourth level was commitment to relativism, where um, in that particular level of moral development, someone would say, I understand myself and I understand what I need to do, how I need to act in a pluralistic world. Now, embedded into the assumption of that being in a fourth level is that our world is in fact pluralistic and not everybody would agree with that assumption. Um, people who subscribe a little bit more to the postmodernist uh, thought are more likely to see the world as pluralistic. Um, people who are more empirical, logical positivist might not buy in so much to um, the whether or not the world is pluralistic or not. And then some people have sort of a hybrid of beliefs, believing that some things are pretty absolute right and wrong and other things are contextual. So lots of ways of thinking about that. Um, no, no right or wrong there, wasn't that multiplistic. Um, at any rate, um, what happens with, uh, with this cognitive development theory um, is in college, students tend to come in at position two and advance to position four on average. So they, they tend to be in late uh, dualism when they get to college and in late multiplicity as they graduate. So that's where a lot of the, uh, where the development will occur 
um, and uh, where things happen. Now, sometimes they'll reach a stage five. Um, there's some research out there that suggests that, that many of them do, um, but rarely will an undergraduate college student kind of move beyond there. There are a few different concepts to understand with Perry. Temporizing is one of them, um, where movement in the various different positions um, is postponed. They kind of plateau out at, let's say, a position three or something of that uh, nature. So not moving on. Um, escape is another term that, that Perry used, where it's someone's kind of in late uh, multiplicity, um, and, excuse me, but usually after late multiplicity. So usually in the earlier stages of relativism, and they essentially abandon all responsibility. They, they, they are so overwhelmed by many different alternatives um, and ways of thinking that they won't make a any choices, um, usually around uh, about position four, sometimes five, but uh, usually four. And then retreat, um, where someone is in a particular level of moral development and all of a sudden they're kicked back to dualism. So it could be that they had a traumatic event and they have to see the world as right or wrong. It could be that they encountered ideas that were too challenging for them and they essentially go back to dualism. Um, but that's usually a temporary regression. It's usually not permanent. Um, some of the original critiques of Perry's theory, uh, Pat King in 1978 critiqued the theory of for not studying a liberal arts college, um, excuse me, for only studying liberal arts college men and not studying women. Um, to, to an extent, that is, that is accurate. One thing to recognize about Perry, though, is that he developed his theory when interviewing both men and women, but then... Um, when he was validating his theory, he looked more to the men. So um, one of the things that may suggest, at least to me, is that as he was developing the theory, although he studied both men and women, his theory fit men better, and that's how he uh, looked to validate it. Now, there are others that have come after Perry, uh, Baxter Magolda, for example, uh, Pat King, for example, um, Belenke, Clinchy, Goldberger, to rule. Um, who have either looked at both men and women in their cognitive development and incorporated that or just looked at women in a, in a balance to Perry. So those are some things to look into. Um, the, there's also a bit of an assessment problem sometimes with Perry's theory. There are eight different varieties of ways to uh, assess le levels of cognitive development on the Perry scheme, and there's not a whole lot of psychometric properties known of those measures, so how well they work, how reliable or, or valid they might be. Um, in assessing Perry's levels, and if you're talking to a student and trying to figure out what level they might be in, if you're looking at the Perry scheme, one thing to recognize is that the focus is on the process of uh, thinking not on a specific belief or reaction. So it's not so much their response to a question uh, initially that's going to give you a clue into their level of, of cognitive development. It's more going to be the process that they go through to reach that conclusion. Um, so you might try to get a student to describe coming to a judgment in a particular situation, um, how they make uh, decisions when there's conflicting information, um, particularly with academic-related content. So Perry is very complex, and it takes a while to really wrap your head around it. I would caution you not to look at it as, as absolutely true and um, accurate for everybody. I think it's a way of understanding cognitive development that has strengths and weaknesses. My guess is you'll find it most useful for college men at traditional, um, of a traditional age, um, particularly those... Uh, probably who are more uh, Caucasian and privileged rather than uh, other other students. But at the same time, I do encourage you to consider it. It was sort of a really good first start to cognitive development theory when it applied to college students, and it helps us understand one way of thinking about the world. One, uh, one caution I would give you, though, is it, it essentially... Um, assumes that the world is a pluralistic place and that the best way of thinking about the world is to think contextually. Now, context obviously is, is important, um, and especially with many different choices and judgments that people may come to. 
if you believe that there are some universal truths in the world, uh, you may not gravitate towards Perry as much. And if you believe that there's some universal truths about what's right and wrong, um, what's okay to do, what's not okay to do, and particularly if you look to um, whether it's a religious text, a philosophy, uh, or something of that sort, Perry may not resonate with you as well, and that's okay. Um, but let's, what I would encourage you to do is to learn the theory, get what you can from it. You may find it very useful. You may find it limited. Um, but give it a try and do your best to wrap your mind around what it is that he has to offer.